select board meeting for July 1st, 2020. If I could have a roll call vote of the select board. Greaves? Here. Kinsman? Here. Mignani? Here. Shear? Here. And Mitchell here. So we are in session. Uh, our first order of business this evening is an entertainment license application from Maisie, uh, the new restaurant up on Pond Street. Um, I will read the legal notice. Notice is hereby given that the select board will conduct a hearing regarding an application for an entertainment license. Maisie, 320 Pond Street, Ashland, Mass, 01721. A public hearing will be held on Wednesday, July 1st, 2020, using Zoom. Meeting information will be posted on the agenda, which can be found on the town website, www.ashlandmass.com. The hearing will take place at 6 p.m. Parties wishing to be heard on this matter should attend the meeting as noted above. Interested parties who are unable to attend the hearing may submit written comments to the select board's office, Town Hall, 101 Main Street, Ashland, Mass, 01721, or by emailing Susan Roby at sroby at ashlandmass.com, signed on behalf of the select board, Steve Mitchell. So the hearing is now in session, and I see that... Uh, uh, the owner from Maisie is here with us. Zach, if you would like to uh, present your application. Um, yes, sir. Hello, everyone. Um, we are uh, petitioning the select board for an entertainment license. Um, it is for um, acoustic music. Um, usually, uh, the entertainment that we get are one or two um, piece. Uh, groups. Uh, we do have one group, a uh, great group called Back Pages. There's three of them. Um, it's mostly acoustic. Um, we use them in Hopkinton at our other place. Um, all the all the uh, the groups are are very good. Um, they all have followings. Uh, we plan on having entertainment um, mostly on Saturday nights. Um, we would like to be uh, able to do it uh, maybe Thursday through Saturday. Um, just in case we need to move nights around. Um, generally, we plan on having it on Saturday nights. Um, while we're using the outside, it will be the band will be on the patio right outside the patio doors. Um, and then come winter time or the colder weather or rain, um, those patio doors will be closed and the band will be right inside those patio doors there. Um, So that's uh, that's the gist. Okay. Uh, at this point, um, if there's anyone else that is speaking in favor of this application, would you please uh, either identify yourself, raise your hand. Uh, if you choose to speak, uh, please do so at this point. Seeing none, uh, at this time, I would ask for anybody that's speaking against or opposed to this application, if they would uh, either raise their hand or speak up. Seeing none, I will read into uh, the hearing a, uh, an email we did receive this afternoon from a Mary Ann Malone if I have that pronounced correctly, at 273 Trailside Way. I live at 273 Trailside Way and am opposed to the request for entertainment by Maisie Restaurant. The noise factor is certainly one thing, but the traffic on Spyglass Hill, not to mention all the people that take illegal lefts heading south on Route 126 are an issue. I walk every day and when the restore is open and the daycare when it was open, the whole area is a traffic issue and nightmare. And that's signed by Marianne Malone. Uh, is there anyone else who is speaking against this application before I open it up to the select board to? Can we just ask a question how late at night um, this will go on? Um, and then the sec my second question is, when we ever get over COVID, will the band still be playing outside or is that just an exception because of the virus? 
I live up um, in, on East Bluff Road. I, I'm right next, right behind Sears. So I also hear a lot of noise from that whole complex. Sure. Thank you, Ann. Nice to see you, by the way. Yeah. Zach, did you want to uh, answer that? Um, sure, yeah. Um, music will um, most likely be uh, indoors uh, most of the time um, because when this COVID thing um, fizzles out, hopefully soon, um, the patio will have uh, seating. We'll be, we'll be getting some additional seating. Right now their tables are kind of spaced and separated. Um, so the band will move into, it's kind of in between the outside and inside, but placed on the inside of those patio doors. Um, it's one of the, the corner exiting the, the patio doors, that table will be removed and the band will be right there. Um, and as per the time, um, the kitchen will be closing at 10. Music will also be ending at 10. Um, yet we will be open until 11 on Friday and Saturday nights um, uh, for more drinks. Um, but music will be ending at 10. I'm sorry, what time did you say the music would end? Is it 10? 10 o'clock, yep. So, Ann, does that, does um, it that does. answer your I question? It does. I mean, I'm really happy you're there. And it, it is just that there are 300, 300 or so condos right behind you. Um, and so we, you know, we have to be careful because we hear everything. Sure. So, but yes, and I, I wish you well. I really do. Um, you know, I love music too. I just know that. Um, other people in town because of other businesses have had some pretty big issues. So I just wanted to know like guidelines and then, you know, what would happen if it ever got to the point where, um, where it was really bothering the neighbors. It, it will be acoustic, um, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and unless I can get, you know, like the Rolling Stones, then I will be willing to break any, uh, any, any limits uh, imposed on us, but mostly it will be acoustic. It's two or three people. Um, and generally not that loud because again, it, it, it is music to um, while you eat. So it's not necessarily get up and dance and and, and um, club music, um, as I would say. It is while people are eating. So it is at a lower volume than, than at a live concert or something. Good, thank you, sir. Thank you, good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you, Ann. Is there anyone else at this point that would wants to send either for or against uh, before I open it up to the select board to uh, discuss. Um, I'd like. Go ahead. I'm hearing somebody that sounds like they want to th talk. Uh, Looks like Howard A and then Howard Jackie. A. Okay, so Howard Axelrod, how are you, sir? Good evening, my friend. How are you? Good, thank you. Good, a pleasure uh, to join the meeting. I would like to be the first person in line to buy the ticket for the Rolling Stone concert. <laughs> I would like front row seats, please. Um, I live behind <coughs> um, Mazzy. Uh, I'm thrilled that we now have a restaurant here. I'm even more delighted that there's going to be music, something that I think is severely lacking in the area. <coughs> uh, what I see being proposed, I think, is uh, very positive and I think quite benign. I think it's highly unlikely that the owner of a restaurant in Ashland, <clears throat> who wants to remain the owner of a restaurant in Ashland, is going to allow activity that is consistently disruptive to abutters of his restaurant. I don't think that plays well. With regards to the write-in <clears throat> that you read, um, I think the traffic situation would be manageable there. I don't think it's going to create a dramatic amount of additional traffic. You do have two entrances uh, and two exits, one on Elliott Street and one on 126. Um, I had often hoped, actually there's three, I believe there's a third one on, on uh, 126 and the one along Spyglass. So I, I don't think that's a real issue. So. Uh, I would go on record as being 100% in, in favor of this. I think it's a, a real net gain for the town. Thank you, Howie. Thank you, Howie. 
appreciate that. Um, anyone else that would like to speak either favor or against this application? So Howard, I have to 100% disagree with you that the owner of a restaurant in Ashland is from Ashland, New Jersey. I've lived in Ashland most of my life, as have my parents. They live near Honto and they are consistently disturbed by the music being played at another restaurant establishment in Ashland. So I was very concerned going into this particular meeting. Hearing that it's most likely going to be acoustic music and most likely going to end by 10 makes me a little less disagreeable, but the phrase most likely does concern me and can we get any kind of anything in writing or a law that says it's only going to be acoustic music, no speakers, and it will absolutely finish by 10 on any given night. And I don't have kids, but I might be able to speak for some parents in the neighborhood that even 10 o'clock might be too late if the music is audible from another comp from another uh, condo or unit. Yeah. Uh, let, let me respond to that, Zach. Am I to understand correctly the music would end at 10 or begin at 10? No, the music would end at 10. <clears throat> well, <laughs> now, 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 before you get started, this is this is not a debate format here. So. Um, you've you've provided your commentary. Jackie's provided hers, and you know I do need to uh, keep this open for other folks to to make comments at this point, and then uh, allow the board then to to adjudicate. So, is there anyone else that would like to speak either in favor or opposed to this applicant? Okay, hearing none at this point, I would open it up to the board. I'll make just a couple of with comments first. Uh, first of all, Zach, um, you know, welcome to Ashland. Um, I did attend along with uh, a contingent from from the town, your ribbon cutting uh, this, this morning. So uh, the restaurant is beautiful. Uh, I'm sure you're gonna do very well in Ashland. So welcome. Uh, so just to get, get it started, we did have a conversation earlier this afternoon or this morning regarding the application itself, because I think it goes to some of the concerns that have been expressed relative to being specific to what you want to do and how you're going to do it. Meaning the specific days, the specific hours, the specific type of music and uh, uh, whether it's amplified, non-amplified, and so on. So uh, at that point, I'll open it up to the board to ask questions, to comment, and then we can deliberate on this. So who wants to go first? Uh, I'll, I'll just, oh, I'm sorry. Go uh, ahead, Rob. No, go ahead. Sure. I just had a, so as you, I think, were pointing out, Steve, we're going to make specific the closing hours and the days. Um, I noted the application, I think, says till 11 o'clock. Um, so I imagine we'll specify 10 o'clock. Um, but, uh, you know, some, um, again, I, I'm happy to see you folks opening up in Ashland. I think it has a great potential. Um, and hopefully this acoustic music entertainment will work out. I think one of the things we'll be able to do is just observe and see if we get any complaints and what is actually happening and I'm sure the board will be responsive to you know if there's if there's problems so again welcome and I think as I think Steve said we'll make specific what days and hours and specify the type of music so thank you okay thank you Rob uh, I think Yolanda you were ready to uh, speak yep yeah so again welcome Zach and welcome to everyone there at at, at Maisie Mazi uh, we are looking forward to having you I think based on what you've said in our conversations, I think it would be good to give you a couple of nights to so you can have some flexibility, but maybe say only one or two nights a week so that even though we say you could have it potentially three nights, but you know, in a week you might only have it once or twice. That way it gives you the flexibility and not having to come to us to say, well, this week I wanna have it on Thursday, can I do a special? Or this week I wanna have it on Friday, can I do a special? So that's where I'm thinking I would go is give you a couple of days saying, and with those those days, you would do one or two nights a week. So, but I'm 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 excited for you. It's nice to have you in Ashland. Thank you, Joe. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Zach, uh, congratulations on the uh, opening of your new restaurant. 
I did not have the uh, availability to be there today for the ribbon cutting ceremony, but I did drive by uh, earlier yesterday to see the uh, to see your location and see all the work that you put into it, and it looks beautiful. Um, I do have a couple of concerns. Um, your application says 11 o'clock, but just now, uh, a few moments ago, you said 11. So um, you said 10. So we're looking at 7 to 10 for, for music. Is that correct? Because your liquor license is till 11 o'clock. So I would assume that your last call is at 1030. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So that would work out. That would work out appropriately. So you don't have people hanging around and, you know, exactly right. and listen to the music and getting a couple extra drinks, even though the last call was at 1030. So hopefully that filters that that problem away. Um, I, I do agree with Yolanda uh, with respect to, you know, a couple of nights to see how it works out. Um, I'm a little concerned with the outside music, uh, though you're saying it's acoustics. Uh, acoustics can have amplifiers. So I'm a little uh, curious as to whether or not the uh, acoustic music that you will provide have amplifiers. So will they or won't they? Um, you, you know, I, I couldn't say either way. Um, well, it's the same bands that you've had in the past at your other location. Yes. Yeah, um, so they either have them or they don't have them. So some bands do and some bands don't. Um, especially when it's just inside, we, we never um, allow any amplification because, it, again, it's too loud even for us indoors because people are trying mm -hmm. to eat. So... Um, it's not it's not a, a club kind of environment it's it's while you're eating dinner so yeah um, and i understand that and i appreciate that but also understand that your neighbors they're trying to be good neighbors and yep. i know you're trying to be a good neighbor as well if you're to put that music outside uh, on your patio music will travel and um you know it, it especially on warm nights and hopefully we'll have a lot more warm nights uh than rainy nights mm -hmm. and um other than folks that have AC, most people like to keep their windows open and, and screens and and they'll be listening to acoustical music if if something like that happens. So uh, I'm sure you don't want to, you know, disturb the neighbors any more than they want to be disturbed as well. Um, so I, my, my gut feeling, and, and again, uh, it comes from many years of experience having to go to uh, noise complaint calls. Uh, in my former career, um, is that your your entertainment should be at least in, in, inside, and and if not, um, no amplifiers on, on the outside. I, that would be my that would be my suggestion. Uh, the other the other uh, request that you put in, I'm sorry, my screen just went on me. Is that uh, you're looking for uh, entertainment for TVs? Um, I don't see anything on your site plan, on your uh, floor plan, where the TVs would be located. Are they going to be located by the bar area? The TVs are above the bar. That's correct. Okay, so it's going to be like a similar, like sports bar, if and, if and when sporting events do come back to a to a normal to a normal uh, pattern. Correct. Yeah, we have six TVs hanging above the middle of the bar area. Yeah. Okay, so. It's going to be a combined restaurant and like sports sports bar viewing for, for that area. Is that? Um, I wouldn't describe it as a sports bar, um, but uh, yes, there is the six TVs. Um, there will be some sports. Sure, there'll be uh, some news, some sports. Yeah, I'll, I'm I'll, sure there won't be any soap operas being watched. There won't be any soap operas. No, that is yeah. correct. Okay, so <laughs> it'll be mostly sporting events. Okay. Um, I'm looking at your floor plan that you uh, submitted as part of the request. Um, could you at least describe where on the outside part of the patio or inside where the uh, once the good, uh, the bad weather comes up that your entertainment would be held inside? Can you tell me exactly where that's going to be? Right. I don't see it on, on your uh, floor plan. It's right in front of the patio doors, right? Right where the, the patio meets the building. Those yep. doors close completely. And... Um, there's no tables there. That'll be all open space, and that's where we'll put the uh, the music. Okay. Just excuse me one second. Okay, so it's going to be near the bathroom area. No. Um, on the opposite wall, actually. On the opposite wall. Yep. Okay, so you have a dry storage area. Or am I looking at the wrong place? Yeah, that that's in the back of the building. So this will be right in the front of the building. So front if of the building. Okay, I'm sorry about that. 
Um, okay, I see it. Okay. Um, geez, if it was if it was to the side in front of the building, it'd probably be a little bit better. At least you'd have some shield with with your building uh, to to it try to uh, block the music. It is in the front of the building. It, it it's in the front of the building. Okay, I have to get myself re-coordinated to where the the patio area, Joe. Yeah. Is the part that's on one twenty six. Okay. The actual entrance is at a ninety degree angle of one twenty six. Got it. Okay. Let me just shoot this down again. Okay. Now I see it. All right. Okay. I'm good. Good. Thank you, Joe. Brandon. Thank you. Um, so I, I'll extend my welcome as well. I know I met you today, Zach, and um, I was able to actually do the um, do the sneak sneak peek last week, and um, the food is amazing. So welcome to Ashland. Everyone's very excited that you're here. Um, as far as the entertainment license, I'm I'm um, I think it's a I think it would be a, a good thing. I do think that um, building on what Yolanda had had mentioned, I think. Um, Giving a, a time like a like two days a week as a max for for you know even if we um, give you the flexibility of Thursday through Saturday if if um, if we can agree on two days a week as as the maximum number of days per week you'd have entertainment I think that would be I think that would be a good thing um, and the other question I had was. Um, you know well more of a comment actually, so I know Jackie had some some concerns and I know the neighbors in general have concerns as well and so I would I would say to the neighbors that um, if we approve this this entertainment license if there is um, feedback from the neighbors that there's an issue that um, that feedback should come back to us so that we can be aware of any concerns that the neighbors have so um, but I do think you know as, as, as long as the uh, the acoustic music isn't amplified to a point where the noise carries to to the neighbors. I think it, I I I support um, approving the the entertainment license. So good. Well, thank you, Brandy. Uh, so at this point, I think it's time for us to uh, deliberate and just to get things started. Based on what what I've heard, uh, we're looking at uh, approving three days a week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, with a request or a condition that only two days a week will actually be provided with entertainment. Uh, the hours of entertainment would be 7 p.m. through 10 p.m. And we'd be talking about non-amplified acoustic music is what, what I've heard. And I think, uh, Zach, that the way you've described what you currently do and your thoughts about uh, the music indoors would be unamplified music. So does that sound to everybody as a starting point for this, uh, for this application? Yep. Does, okay. Yeah, and as far good. as the outdoor uh, uh, part of the, uh, the request, uh, I think the same conditions should apply obviously should apply, you know, non-amplified music. Uh, it seems to me, and I, I, you know, just by being somewhat familiar with the footprint uh, that the, the music would be facing away from, from the residential area. So it would be facing towards Pond Street. So I think that would also, I think, help to buffer um, any noise, but I, again, I think we should be vigilant in terms of, of any complaints that we might receive uh, relative to noise. So are there any other conditions that, that the board seems would be reasonable and uh, important to include? I just, I have a question and a concern about being specific that it has to be non-amplified acoustic music only because if I'm an acoustic guitar, I may have an amp just for, to, for quality of sound. Um, or if I'm singing and playing guitar, I may want to use a microphone. And looking at the space, I don't know, that's, that's my only concern is that I'd, 
by saying non-amplified completely, then they can't have any amplification. I'm just basing it on what Zach was yeah. saying, which was, you know, he, he's, his concern indoors certainly is that he doesn't want to uh, become, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the main focus necessarily. So I'm basing it on his request. Right. I'm just wondering if we just say acoustic music rather than yeah, non-amplified. My acoustic. concern is that we, we seem at, at times we've seemed to be less specific than maybe we should have. And, and it's created some issues. So. Uh, you know, I'll ask Zach again. I mean, you, you, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's your application. What, what would you be most comfortable with? Yeah. So um, if we're saying um, non-amplified is that, are we including um, a microphone in that? Um, so, uh, well, we would be that sample. Correct. That's non-amplified. A microphone right. amplifies the voice. So right. if you want, if they have a microphone, then you'd need amplification. Yes. So all bands definitely use a microphone. Um, it's their instruments that aren't necessarily all amplified. Um, like we don't, don't use any percussion, for example, um, in general, uh, other than hand bongos is, is the only ones that I have uh, allowed because it really just blurbs everybody out. There's nothing else you hear. Um, but um, like Yolanda mentioned, actually, um, some guitarists, even if it's an acoustic guitar, they do use an amplifier. Um, but again, that is volume controlled, of course, because it's not, I don't want it to be loud in my restaurant. Um, because again, it, it ruins the atmosphere. You can't eat and have blaring music in your ear. Um, so yes, I, I guess I would be opposed to complete uh, no amplification. Okay. Um, so okay. we'll scratch the we'll scratch the non amplified and we'll call it acoustic amplified music. Yeah. And volume control is is absolutely uh, going to be monitored by us. Uh, like I said, it's 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 not in our benefit to have very loud music. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chair, if I may. Sure. Zach, I, I I don't I don't underestimate what you're saying, but we've had owners of restaurants come before us and say the exact same thing. And then the next thing we know, we get complaints because the mucus, music is so loud and um, um, neighbors, you know, from across the street or in the back, the back area of a specific location, uh, they've been making complaints, complaints after complaints. Um, I know you have a place, it was in Hopkinton, right? That's correct. Okay. Um, and you have uh, music there as well, or you have some sort of entertainment there as well. Yeah. Um, is it a uh, commercial location or is it a, a residential uh, near and around uh, where you currently are located in Hockington? It's right next to the town hall, right in the center of town. Okay. So there's not, there's not many residential families in that area other than the gas stations, mm -hmm. police and fire and the post office. There's actually homes um, right behind us. Uh, there's a neighborhood behind us, the Walcott Street neighborhood. And, okay. um, and there's some houses across the street too, right behind the library and, uh, and the Korean restaurant there. Okay. And most of your entertainment is on the inside, not on the outside? That is correct. Um, okay. We did have, uh, during this thing, while we have the tents out, uh, we do have a tent in Hoppington as well. Um, and we did have music last weekend, actually, outside um, under the tent. Um, and we did not have any complaints. Um, it was, again, till 9.30, 10-ish. Um, when it got dark, that's when we, we closed things down. We're not a late night spot. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to make sure that we have some sort of harmony between with your, with what you we want to do and the neighbors surrounding that area. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to get a happy medium here and I'm not trying to be difficult to you. So um, we, we, we want to do what's best for everybody in, in, in and around. So Mr. Chair, is there some kind of uh, qualifying language we could put with the amplified acoustic music? Uh, yeah, I, I think we can come up with something uh, that's that's appropriate here, um, and I think Yolanda's already working on something uh, as we speak. So, uh, are there any other comments from the board uh, specific before we close this? Uh, before we close the uh, public hearing, I, I just had one other question, actually, just kind of in relation to that. So, Zach, are, are you generally on site when there's live music? Is that, is that something that you manage personally or is it someone, um, another manager? How does that work generally? 
That is correct. So it's either me or my brother George. Um, we have our uh, our GM, which is uh, a man named Alex. Um, one of us is always on site. Correct. Oh, great. Thank you. Good. All right. Any other board comments, questions? Uh, if not, then I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Got a motion in the second. We'll just say uh, a, a uh, aye at this point. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And now we are ready to uh, take a vote on this. Uh, and Yolanda, if you have a suggested motion that we can uh, review. I do. I move that we approve the entertainment license for Mozzie for Thursday through Saturday night from 7 to 10 p.m. with entertainment only being had two of the three nights each week, that it is acoustic or acoustic amplified, uh, and that it is during, during now, it can be outside, and then when appropriate, it moves inside, and that we, in, we do a, re, a review in three months to see how it's affecting the neighborhood. And if everything's good in those three months, then we would just open it up to a general, um, we would take off the restriction after the three month review. Okay, any, how's that sound to, uh, to the board? Any, any other conditions that, that we think might be needed? No, well, if not. I had a question. Uh, what's the restrictions that would come off? Well, just that if they have a three month, basically a three month probation period. And if there's problems during that probationary period, we may then have to remove the amplification or move, right. change the timing or change the location or something like that. Sure. I guess I, I just, but it wouldn't be, there's nothing that we're going to be adding to it at the end of three months, I guess. That's no. What, no, 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 no. Okay. All right. So we have a motion. Uh, do I have a second? I'll second that. Who was that? That was Joe. me. Joe, okay. So we have a motion and a second. We'll do a roll call vote for this. Uh, Greaves? Aye. Kinsman? Aye. Mignani? Aye. Shear? Aye. And Mitchell? Aye. So congratulations, Zach. Uh, you know, we hope you have a, a long and prosperous uh, uh, journey uh, with, with the town of Ashland. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Paul. Happy Fourth. Thanks. Happy congratulations fourth. again. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so now uh, actually our next item on the agenda is citizen participation. I am going to defer that till at some point after the old new business and I think move right on to the traditional and the uh, uh, proverbial uh, transfer of the gavel and uh, meeting the reorganization of the board. Belated as it might be, it's now that time to reorg the board. So. I'll open up the discussion for a board reorg uh, at this point. Don't all speak at once. <laughs> well, I haven't. Well, I, I will just say first uh, thank you, Steve, for your efforts over the past year. Um, I think you've done a, a great job in moderating the board through a number of things, and um, so I will. And just so for people who don't know, we traditionally have the chair serve one year although we've made uh, exceptions and we've kind of uh, been sharing the, the positions and the officers so um, you know we've uh, uh, pretty much um, um, have a kind of an orderly progression that we share this and so um, I'm happy to uh, welcome uh, the new the new officers and uh, my understanding is that Yolanda is going to be the new chair and Joe's stepping up as vice chair and Brandy's going to be her first officer as clerk. So, um, but I just wanted to um, thank Steve for his efforts and welcome uh, the incoming officers. So, so, so Rob, well, you actually have to nominate us. So how yeah, <laughs> I'm happy to do that. Let's relax for Go a ahead, second. Steve. All right. You're not chair yet. I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, Rob, thank you, thank you for the for the, for the kind words, certainly. Uh, but definitely time to, uh, and I, I'm a strong advocate for an annual uh, turnover of, of officers. So you, you did a great job of describing uh, the process. So why don't you make the motion and uh, and then we can uh, we can turn the gavel over. Okay, I will 
make the motion to uh, nominate uh, Yolanda Greaves as uh, chair of the board and Joseph Magnani as uh, vice chair and Brandy Kinsman as clerk of um, the Ashland Select Board for the coming year. Second. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, we'll do a roll call vote for this. Greaves? Aye. Kinsman? Aye. Magnani? Aye. Cheer? Aye. And Mitchell, aye. So congratulations to the new officers. And I hand over the <laughs> gavel. And I second. accept. <laughs> All right. All right. Good luck. Thank, thank you, Steve. Thanks, thank you. Steve. So, Steve, before we go into our first our first item uh, on the old and new after the org, the reorg, I want to thank you for your year of leadership. I think you've done a great job as chair. Uh, as you said, it was a little bit longer than usual, but when things are a little bit difficult or things are changing, we have to adapt with that. So thank you. And I, and I know you're not more than a phone call away. Should I have any questions? Well, thank you, Yolanda. It's been an interesting year, I'm sure, on so many different levels. And uh, yeah. uh, I suspect the next year is going to be as interesting. Yeah, just as interesting. Okay. Well, good luck. Thank you. We are gonna move on to the old and new business. We're gonna to go to the Eversource update. I know we ho hopefully have all had the opportunity to read the final draft of the report. And Rob, I'm gonna hand this over to you. Okay. And what are next? What are we seeing as next steps with this report? So um, <clears throat> there's been a number of things happening. Of course, we had the, the report was issued and I think we've all looked at it. And what we were gonna to do today was talk about the best ways to use that report, uh, but also a number, a few other things. I know Diane Ring and um, Chuck and Lynn Lids um, have sent us emails and made suggestions about how to use the report and also uh, told us about kind of two new wrinkles. One is that the Attorney General uh, of the, of the, of the Massachusetts, of state of Massachusetts has petitioned the Department of Public Utilities to do a statewide um, a statewide study of the need for gas uh, energy in the future, and um, I think Diane made the point that it was very similar to the request that we made uh, of Elizabeth Stanton to review the need for the Ashton pipeline. This is a a statewide pipeline. So one of their suggestions is we should support that petition. They made a number of specific. Um, suggestions. And the other thing that they talked about was this Acadia report, which is another kind of an update to the whole gas, statewide gas situation. Um, and that you don't need, uh, <coughs> that we don't need uh, fossil fuel gas for heating or, or for electrical, I should say electrical generation. Um, they're less clear about the whole heating situation. So I wanted to ask Chuck about that if he's available. Um, so so those are kind of the, like the broad outlines. So I think, um, I don't know, uh, Madam Chair, if you want to uh, allow people to speak on this first and then we could kind of discuss it some more. We have some folks waiting to talk or if you want to do that afterwards. Uh, they I'd did actually like to get an update from Michael on where things stand sure. in regards to the cases and the actual Eversource request and, and then go and ask and get input from the public. Sure. Sounds good. Yeah, I actually, um, I checked with attorney Winter today. He really had no updates since the last meeting um, on all three fronts. If you recall, we're, we're litigating this in three different venues and uh, really had nothing new to report. Mm. Okay. Good. Steve? So I just wanted to comment uh, specifically on the Acadia Center report. I don't know if other board members had an opportunity to read it, but it really is a, uh, you know, fully supports the uh, uh, Dr. Stanton's uh, um, report to, to the town. And, uh, you know, I think it makes, a, it continues to make a compelling case why um, the uh, additional investment in, in natural gas is just not needed. And so it's just more I think fuel for for an argument, depending on what goes on with our court cases, and if you know uh, if we're unsuccessful and we have to appeal. Uh, but I think the big thing really is, as Rob uh, discussed, is the attorney general really going out and and pursuing 
uh, this with uh, the Department of Public Utilities. So I think that's something we should we should be monitoring, and I think we should be supporting it uh, as well. So, thank you. Okay. So let's open it up. Um, Chuck and Lynn, if you have some input you'd like to give to us, you should be. Can you? I have unmuted you, so you're good. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so um, the you may or may I think the board knows that um, the uh, sustainability committee has, um, along with um, our sustainability coordinator, um, are working with the Rocky Mountain Institute and with um, se several other towns in Massachusetts about increasing the electrification of um, heating in the, um, in the town. Uh, as I think everybody knows the both the plans for the public safety building and for the new school both are basically electrification uh, policies. Um, and, you know, that fits, I think, with the, both the, as Steve points out, with the Acadia report and with um, our own uh, report here. So, um, you know, we'll, I, I have not, I'm not clear what the Attorney General whether the attorney general's petition to public utilities commission is going to be uh, actually taken up, but she certainly was very clear that uh, we really need to rethink this. And that's what Ashland has been doing. And, you know, I'm really impressed with the, um, with how Michael has managed this and the, and the, um, and the select board. Okay. So Sir. Chuck, I just had a question. Um, the Acadia report, what do you, uh, you mentioned gas and electrific electrification in place of gas. So the Acadia seemed very focused on um, electrification, uh, electricity generation via gas, as opposed to our case is the use of gas for heat. So how yeah. would you address that? The, um, you know, I know that um, this is, well, you know, we, in this house we're living in right now, our, um, the ex external heat we have come from heat pumps. A lot of people are, increasing number of people are using heat pumps to um, heat. And I think if we're going to get to our goal of being, um, carbon neutral by 2040, we're going to have to push um, and encourage people to transition to uh, even their home heating systems to electrification. Hopefully, we uh, will get support from the state to do that. Um, so it, there's no question this is a big and complicated and difficult issue. So I guess I think in our case, the answer would be that the, I guess the communities that are downstream, and I suppose that includes us to some ex extent, need to focus on uh, electric heat through electrification as opposed through heat through uh, natural gas. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Could, I, could I add one more, one more thing? Um, one of the things that is going to have to happen is that we're going to have to get off of natural gas cooking. And that's going to be a really difficult transition because people have been sold on the fact that natural gas is, is cheaper and, and better. But it does, there are more and more studies showing how much, how many toxins are in the house because of, of uh, gas cooking. And Steve, you had once mentioned the possibility of having demonstrations for people of induction cooktops and and long term it, it or term it might be and if we could ever get back to the community center we might be able to have some demonstrations to show people how they could cook with with the induction cooktops that it, it I, i've never forgotten that you said that i think it was a really good idea 
Okay. Is there anyone else on who would like to speak about this? Mark? Dasoni? Mark, are you also on a phone that I need to unmute? Yes. <laughs> the one that ends in 4086? Yes. Okay. I'm unmuting you. Okay. Thank you. And Mark, I'm going to, uh, Mark, before you go, I'm going to ask you to turn down your computer yeah. so we don't hear ourselves back. Thank you. No, I don't want to have a headache twice over. Okay, so I want to congrats to the New York. Steve, you did good. Joe, you got another headache come on with the vice chair now. <laughs> and um, I'm just going to say overall that um, the slower this goes on, the more advantage Evertrust is going to be having because uh, they got they got the ball and they're caught with the, this legal stuff and it has not been an answer since um, almost a half a year now and it seems like everything's going going slower and slower. But I just wanted to just put out forth saying that um, until this actual result, this is, I'm just going to be thinking it's going to be a uh, probably go through the winter with nothing else happening. And uh, I'm not going to be real happy. I don't think anybody else is going to be real happy. And I'm still in the uh, line thinking about who's going to should get Framingham involved and pay for damages in, this, in some properties. But in the advantage of the stores, if it's going to be this slow. That's it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mark. I'm going to mute you again. Okay. If there is anyone else who is looking to talk about this. So I guess we as a board have to determine if we want, Michael, did you raise your hand? Yes, go ahead. I think you can unmute yourself though. I, there you go. I did. Um, yeah, I just, I, I wanted to bring up one point. Um, one of the things that we're trying to balance is uh, transparency versus strategy. And sometimes what we're doing is, is we're talking in these open meetings really about some stuff that could get into strategy okay. and things that we don't necessarily want to have the opponent's side knowing that we're discussing and kind of our, our angles. So I don't think anybody's done anything wrong. I don't think we've done anything wrong. I'm just saying that's something that I think we all have to kind of keep at the forefront of our minds. You know, we all kind of joke about, you know, who watches these meetings and who doesn't watch these meetings. You know, Eversource, if they are smart, um, would be watching these meetings just right. to kind of follow along what's going on, especially if they have the agenda. So, um, you know, part from what I've understood with, with litigation and, and now I've been involved in, in a bit, um, is a lot of it's about anticipating what the other side is going to, to do and try to you know, craft your arguments, um, proactively addressing those things. Um, so it's always a real benefit when you can have, I guess, uh, inside view into what your opponent's mind is. So anyway, like I said, I just wanted to point that out. Like, I don't think anybody's done anything wrong or there's been some major faux pas, but it's a, just a balance that we're trying to achieve. I guess the one question I would have is a couple of people have brought up that we should submit our the report that was done for us to the AG's office. And if people are supportive of that, I think that's a very straightforward, easy thing that we can do. Um, and then it sounds like, Michael, we might need to have a an offline executive Scott discussion about what we want to do moving forward with the report and with the cases. Is that correct? Well, you know, I think the report is certainly very public now. Um, right. I think, you know, Dr. Stanton has put it on her website. We've certainly put it on ours. We have been, um, we have not encumbered or embargoed that report at all. So it's, right. it's out there. Um, I do think as we start getting more information back from these cases or as they start advancing or as they continue advancing through the system, um, you know, we will have some decisions that will need to be made. And that's probably something that would be um, good for executive session. Understanding that we can always get input from the public. Correct. About that. So, okay. I would, um, Madam Chair, I would just suggest from the email, I mean, it's really based on what Diane and Chuck and Lynn wrote to us that there's, I think they suggested three actions. One is to um, 
share the Acadia report with the, I believe the attorney general and the DPU, which is, I guess would be something part of our EFSB application potentially. Um, and also of course, send them our Liz Stan's report if we haven't already done that. Have we sent them that report? I the believe to the EFSB. Yeah. I believe we have, yes. Okay. Um, and then their other, uh, their other uh, was to just write to the DPU in support of the AG's petition. So I don't know if the board is ready to, I would certainly support that. Uh, I don't know if uh, the board members have had a chance to review the petition and, and um, just decide if we should weigh in on it as well. And I think as, um, as Yolanda mentioned, you know, the third thing is to send our report to the, to the attorney general um, and, um, and with our, you know, just to bring, to bring our case to her attention because uh, she seems very interested in reviewing the whole gas infrastructure. And this could, I think, really help our case to get the AG involved or at least aware of our situation. So I would um, just uh, put those three actions out for consideration uh, for the board. And hopefully if there's some of them, um, I would certainly think that we should send the um, Liz Stans report to the attorney general. And I'd be happy to um, volunteer to write some draft letters for review for folks um, or, or for Michael to review and send out in, in that line. If I get a, if we can get a, uh, a sense from the board of what uh, what we basically want to say in those letters. So other board members input or comments on if you want to send a letter in support, Steve? Yeah, I'm absolutely supportive of uh, communicating our support of the, of the Attorney General's uh, petition. And at the same time, uh, send the Stanton report. I, I agree completely with Rob in terms of making her aware of our specific situation, whether she is or isn't. Uh, but this would uh, certainly uh, make uh, make her aware of it, uh, or her office. Um, I don't believe, Michael, this is anything that's not public at this point in time. Uh, that's both, correct. both actions are, are uh, out in the air. Okay. So I, I would say we, we do that. I'm, I'm certainly okay with, with, uh, with Rob drafting something that we can review and get it out uh, as soon as we can. Okay. Joe or Brandy? Brandy, I'll let you go. Okay. Um, so I, I agree. I think we should definitely send the Stanton report to the Attorney General. I think um, you know, supporting her petition is, is something that we should do as well. So, um, you know, and thanks to Rob for, for staying on top of this and for offering to draft um, the, the letters to, to go with these. So thanks. Joe? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I wholeheartedly agree um, that the AG's office should get uh, Dr. Stanton's report from us. Um, the more people that are up in the higher echelons uh, read that report, uh, hopefully can help sway their uh, opinion uh, as to what needs to be done uh, for all of us uh, as a town and for other communities as well that, are, that may have to deal with this down the road. And uh, I appreciate uh, Rob stepping up and sending out that letter. Um, I'm, I'm sure we will do a fantastic job. So I'm all for it. Okay. So I don't think we need a motion unless people feel we, we wanna do a motion to support those three actions uh, presented to us by Diane and Chuck and Lynn. Uh, and then, so if someone would like to make a motion to support those actions and then move forward on them. I'll make a motion to support those actions as discussed and, and, um, okay. and uh, move forward with that. Can I get a Maybe second? A second. second. Right here, second. Great. Um, Brandy, oh, no, Brandy's back. Uh, I will do a roll call vote. Uh, Kinsman? Aye. Mignani? Aye. Shear? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Greaves, aye. So we will move forward with those recommendations and Rob is going to draft a letter for us. I would also suggest those of you that are watching, uh, if you want, we can get the information out to you as to who to send those letters to. And also as individuals, if people want to, you know, board members want to send an individual letter as well as the board letter, that would be good. I would just, uh, I have one other thought and I'm not sure we've done it. We, 
I'm not sure we've sent the report to Senator Spilka and Representative Lewis, who we've been very involved in this. Does anybody, and I don't know if anybody remember if we sent it, if not, we should, and maybe just a, a quick cover letter saying, hey, you know, help us or. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I would recommend Steve. Rob that you uh, certainly include both of them in the, okay. in the letter to the attorney general. But also, I would I would suggest that you also include references to the Acadia Center report as well in this uh, in your 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 draft. Okay. Yeah, and if you could draft that and then get us all get us out to us to re to review it or send it to Michael. Sure. Or, okay. Great. Moving on to our next item: end of year account reconciliation. Michael, I believe this is going to be you. Yes. If we have anything yet. I'm, I'm sorry? If we have anything yet. Um, yeah, so I had uh, included this, I think, with our backup as a separate item. Um, this is what we do at the end of every year. Um, I think about five years ago, um, everybody knows that at the end of the year, if we need to make uh, some transfers from the FinCom reserve fund, we do so at the end of the year and FinCom votes those and trans makes those transfers. But we also have the ability now to transfer in between accounts at the end of the year, but that requires the approval of the select board in FinCom as well. Um, so I'm here to request those, um, those accounts. I just need to pull them up again and I can explain them a little bit because uh, FinCom had some questions before they voted it and I just kind of wanted to explain some things first. Michael, when you get it, do you want to share your screen so the public can see what we're talking about? I can. I think I can. If I don't mess it up. You know, technology is not my thing. And if you can, I can. Uh, I think, or Steve can, if he has it pulled up. I, I can pull it up if you need it. Oh, I, I can do this. You got it. Down to <laughs> the bottom, do hit the little oh, green button. You know what? Uh, I don't think I'm a co-host, so um, I, I can do it. share my screen. Hold on a sec. Where the Jeopardy music plays again? Yeah. <laughs> okay. There we go. Perfect. There we go. So um, you'll see that Brittany has, you know, highlighted where it says for FinCom um, and select board approval. So just as a reminder, at the beginning of last fiscal year, or actually at the last town meeting, meaning the 2019 annual town meeting, um, we put in a salary contingency line. And then over the course of the fiscal year, as we um, do evaluations and, and things of that nature, and we, we basically either give merit or uh, COLA increases, um, what we're doing is at the end of the year, we're retroactively applying them from that salary contingency account into some of the different accounts as well. Um, that's what makes up the majority of these. If you remember this year, um, was also the first year we finally implemented a joint like COLA slash merit-based increase instead of just doing COLAs. Um, so we'll continue to move forward with that. So uh, what we're requesting to do is move um, money out of the salary contingency account, the employee retirement account, um, inspections, um, and then town council legal services, and then transfer them into the uh, town manager's account, town accountant's account, assessing, treasurer collector, data processing, town clerk, conservation, planning, human resources, economic development. And I don't know if there's any more down there. Okay, there's a few others, public facilities, DPW, um, council on aging, rec uh, recreation, youth and family services. Um, and then in the expense line, central purchasing, telecommunications, data processing, public buildings, veteran services workers' comp and employee hiring. Um, some of these salary accounts, you'll see that they are reflective of more than what you would consider a COLA or a merit-based increase. 
um, and I will try to go through those. So with the town manager and the economic development budget, um, we have, if you recall, we hired the uh, communications and um, event coordinator. And so the salary helps go to, it's split between those two accounts. Um, assessing, we, we need to make an adjustment um, to our assessor's salary. Uh, regarding that, as well as our treasurer collector, finance is getting a little bit difficult um, to find people for. Um, data processing, um, we essentially moved everybody except the director um, up closer to market. They're still quite a bit behind. Um, and then town clerk, that's, uh, that's really driven more by Cindy Livingstone. And then planning, uh, and planning is, is we, our current planner was hired at a, at a higher salary than our previous one. Um, and then public facilities, that's, we did that because we we're transferring, um, we, we've taken on an additional person and then um, we're contracting out some of the uh, custodial services. And then actually Council on Aging, Rec and Youth and Family Services or, or Human Services technically um, we needed to make some adjustments to those uh, because they had not had an adjustment in quite a few years. So don't know if you have any questions about those. Probably gotten into a little bit more detail than you wanted, but. So Michael, I have a question. Um, mm -hmm. So it sounds like a lot of these are bigger adjustments than than you typically do in a year. So how does how does this compare to say last year's transfers? Um, I don't think, yeah, you know, that's a good question. I do not remember us making a lot of like market rate adjustments last year. Um, Jen, do you, do you recall? Yeah, I don't believe we did that many. I think there was like one, there were a couple there, I think there was one or two. And then when we really started to look at it, um, overall, we yeah. realized we had to do some. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions or comments or concerns? I would just like to add one thing because this did come up at FinCom. Just, I want everybody to, to understand and remember, including those people that are watching, that this is reflective of the last fiscal year, literally the last fiscal year, the fiscal year 2020 budget. Um, again, I wanna reiterate that um, for this fiscal year, the one that we're currently in starting today, 21, um, there are no adjustments, no COLAs, uh, no merit adjustments. Um, you know, I'm not, you know, we're not necessarily beating our chest about that. I just don't want people to think that these adjustments are happening in the current environment that we're in. Though they do carry forward, Michael, right? So they were done in 2020, but it's not like we're reducing their salaries back in 2021. Right. These were in, right. put in place and they'll just carry forward, but we're not making them effective July 1. Okay, Joe, you had a question? I do, Madam Chair, thank you. Uh, Michael, uh, because of uh, the COVID epidemic and some of the things that the town can't do, uh, I'm kind of curious and interested as to the event planner or the event coordinator um, with a lot of the things that are being canceled and not being yet utilized. Is, um, is she being utilized in another way to maybe help support an, an, another department in some way? She is in, in a way. Um, so her communications, we're, we're actually leaning a little bit more on her communications uh, background and her communications section of the job description. So I know she's been working with a couple of different committees in addition to, you know, okay. the board and staff on trying to get information out there. Um, we're, you know, we do want to expand that a little bit. And, you know, we do a lot of like social media activity right now. Um, would love to see some more things like videos of department activities or things like, you know, that we did before the election where, you know, Tara went through and explained, you know, how the election worked and everything. We, we think those are very, very helpful. Um, depending on how long this lasts, meaning COVID-19 and the impacts to different events, um, there is the opportunity, uh, I think, for her to work on a few other things as well. 
I, I think they would need to be defined, very well defined projects. Um, if you know, if we're talking about something like, uh, um, you know, doing something like a citizens academy or something to that effect, you know, something that's very finite, you know, putting a program together like that. But I think we want to just assess and have a better idea of where COVID nineteen is heading before we do that. Not a bad idea. Thank you. Appreciate the answer. Okay. So we need a motion to approve the transfer of funds. If I could get one from someone. I would be happy to try if that's okay with you, Madam Chair. Please go ahead. I would recommend that we make a recommendation to transfer the balance of $321,900 to the appropriate line items uh, at the request uh, from the town manager. Okay, if I can get a second. I'll second that. Great, we have a, a motion and a second. We will do a roll call vote. Kinsman? Aye. Mignani? Aye. Mitchell? You're muted, Steve. Good and aye. And Shear? Aye. And and I just Greaves. want to note that aye. we're going to have, uh, since our chair did 90% of the motions, <laughs> We're gonna. The rest of us are gonna have to start paying a little more attention, I guess. Well, I know. That, well, I, well the other, you know, the other thing that some boards do is the chair actually makes the motion, and someone says so move. But we uh, have not done that historically, so. Well, we, we have. That may be a good discussion point. Yeah. <laughs> what we've been doing uh, as actually is the vice chair and the clerk has the vice chair's <laughs> making motion the clerk's been seconding so why don't we just right. continue that we've go. got a good just start on it so <laughs> and joe i can help you out a little bit too i gotta i gotta i gotta learn the ropes yeah that's go. not a problem we'll work on it together <laughs> okay team effort good. kid <laughs> <laughs> okay so that uh has passed 5-0. Thank you, Michael, for presenting that. And thank you to Brittany for preparing that for us. Uh, going on on the agenda, the June 30th annual town meeting update. Michael, I will let you start with that. Yes, um, just a quick recap for everybody that was there. Um, we did achieve a quorum and um, you know all five articles passed um, with relatively, you know, little discussion or controversy. Um, I just want to take a moment to really express my appreciation first to the moderator who had to make some very tough choices knowing that any choice he made would be unpopular in, in some circles. And, you know, he understood what he had to do and um, he did it, I think, very gracefully and very decisively, but very analytically as well. Um, and then also want to thank the select board for you know, some of the actions that you have taken in terms of paring down the warrant and, you know, being supportive of those efforts. And then, you know, just really want to, to highlight the efforts of, of our staff and volunteers. Yolanda, I think you know a couple of them um, <laughs> that, that showed up to help. Um, but yeah, I'm not expecting, um, I'm not expecting town meetings to last that long in the future. That's short. <laughs> short. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's my take on it. Glad to have a budget. Yes. Yeah. Any other thoughts from anyone else? That it was ran there? very smooth, I thought, Good. for the first time in, in dealing with the uh, pandemic and, and everything else. So you're going to have naysayers no matter what, what you do. And, uh, you know, they could have easily come down, but they didn't show. It's easy to be on electronic you know, devices to be able to say things, but um, it takes more to be there and, and do what you have to do in person. And I understand people are fearful and, and worried about, you know, catching this and that, and, and I get it completely. I understand completely. But, um, you know, the, the precautions were taken big time, and I appreciate all the effort in doing that. So thank you. Yeah, I want to uh, just a big thank you to Joe Richardson and his staff for taking the time and, and really figuring out the best way to do it. I do think we need to have a discussion about how we move forward because we know that we have at least two big items and we are going to have to have a special fall town meeting. We don't know what's going to be happening with COVID-19. We don't know 
you know, how comfortable people are going to be coming to an enclosed space like that. I think we were fortunate that we were able to have the doors open and the fans going. And, but I think a, a, a more lengthy discussion between us and the moderator and how we can do it to allow people to feel comfortable. And if they're not feeling comfortable, what do we need to do? Uh, as I think we, you know, some of us have had the discussion that to move away from open town meeting is not an easy thing. It's a charter change and it would take a lot of discussion. Uh, representative town meeting certainly would have allowed us to do a remote Zoom meeting, but because we're open town meeting, that's not, it, we were not allowed to do that. The legislation was not there. And I don't see that happening because that would be very difficult to control. I mean, as we see here with just the small number of people that attend our meetings, uh, to be able to check in voters and things like that would be very difficult to do for open town meeting. But I think we need to have discussion. There were people who had their meetings on Saturdays. We don't have a town meeting on Saturday. I'm not quite sure why, but I know there might be people in our community who don't want to do a meeting, a, a town meeting on Saturday because it's their Sabbath. So how do we how do we find that? And I think we have to keep having a discussion as we move into the fall with COVID-19 going on. I was a little concerned, Madam Chair, that, um, I was surprised I should say that uh, childcare wasn't offered. Uh, it was offered in the past, but this time it wasn't. I know some people were a little concerned about the fact that they couldn't do it because they had childcare concerns. So, and I don't know if it was because of, uh, you know, the COVID-19 and we couldn't get the kids to do what they needed to do. I'm sure that was, a, you know, a big part of it, but in between a rock and a hard place when it comes to things like that. Well, I also know there was concern that if there was overflow, if we used more, if more people showed up than we had seats for, the overflow was going to be in the cafeteria. Oh. The cafeteria might have been the space to have childcare. When we do it in the auditorium, childcare happens in the gym, so the kids are keeping active. Plus, there's still lots of concerns with childcare. Mm -hmm. No, agreed. I Steve? think it's still, you know, we're still very much at that. Uh, at that point, uh, despite the fact that Massachusetts has done an admirable job with reducing uh, the curve, um, you know, we're still very much in the middle of this pandemic. And oh, yeah. we certainly do not want to create situations where we're going backwards. So, exactly. you know, I would agree that we really need to have uh, uh, a lot of discussion, you know, moving forward. And I would hope the discussion would include you know, how we can better integrate technology and remote participation in, in our civic life. Uh, okay. I don't know if, you know, how that would apply to town meeting per se, but I think in other areas, uh, it certainly should be something that we, we should be uh, factoring in. And hopefully, hopefully the le legislature is going to, uh, you know, really uh, accommodate this and, and review it and, and make some, some changes. Yeah, good. Yeah, I okay. just, uh, I think, um, you guys made some very important points. As you know, I, I chose not to attend for, you know, I think it's, um, you know, something everyone has to decide for themselves. And I certainly don't, um, I don't criticize the folks trying to do some very complicated preparations for a very, in a very challenging situation. And I thank the people who attended. Um, but I think, uh, you know, going into November, I presume, uh, you know, we're going to have some very important issues and we'll want a lot of participation. We don't know what the COVID-19 situation is going to be. So I, I really, I think you guys made some very important points about staying involved with this and looking at it, uh, really what we can do to really make it as safe as possible and have as much participation as possible, um, especially where we're going to be dealing with some distinctly non-routine items and how to have that kind of discussion and interaction. I think you know, the whole electronic approach, if we can do something remote that is legit, I think that'd be great. Uh, other than that, if, of course, we don't know what the status of the, um, of the pandemic is going to be in November. I don't think anyone right. does. Uh, but if it's, if it's like it is now, then I think we need to figure out how to be outside or, uh, but yet the weather will be more of an issue in Saturday and childcare and all that. Um, so, um, but uh, I think it is important to stay focused on this. And uh, so I, I agree with those, those comments. So thank you. Lots, lots more discussion and hopefully input from the community. Yeah. 
I'm also Good. curious, um, like what other communities are doing, because we can't be the only one that, that is wrestling with this. So mm. if, um, if other communities have done similar things to what we've done, which is pare down their, their warrant for, um, you know, basically to, to pass a budget and putting off um, other typical things that would have been on the warrant in, in the spring. So, I mean, I, I, I think, I, I mean, I, I agree, we got to look at some, some different options, but also if, if there's ways that we can work with our legislative partners to, to make it, um, to be able to, to make sure we have, um, we have voices represented because I think that, you know, in a safe way, because I do, I agree. I think that, I think the fall town meeting is, is exceptionally important to make sure that people feel like they have a way to participate in a safe way. So, but like I said, I don't, I don't think we're going to be the only town that that's going to be um, dealing with these issues. So, so good. some of, some of the other communities around us have representative town meeting. So they were able to do remote like Natick I know was, but Holliston, I believe they've pushed theirs out to either July or August. I don't know yet where their location is going to be. Some of the other smaller communities have done it outside on a Saturday because that's their habit is to do their, their town meetings on a Saturday. Um, further out west, there's a couple of communities. You saw pictures. They did it on their, their football field. They had tents. Um, so it's, it's a discussion. But for us, part of it is a charter change. Right, our charter. I mean, we were able to vote and move our town meeting, um, but those are those are all good questions, and it's going to take a lot of discussion. So, on that note, we are going to move on to discuss outdoor dining and reopening. I'm going to start with Michael, and then maybe Jen. And if yeah. I'm not sure who's going <laughs> to, yeah, I am. Um, you know, I think we. we put this on the agenda just to kind of a status update and see how things are going. Um, so far, I have heard really um, no issues. Um, we have had, I guess you could say some tangential issues with some places as we've gone in to kind of make sure that everything's running smoothly from an outdoor dining and a COVID standpoint. But uh, so far, things that seem to be going well. Jen, did you, uh, did you want to offer anything? No, I think you covered it. I mean, I think um, businesses have um, worked with our planning department and Beth Reynolds, our economic development director, to make sure that they're able to open. And so um, my understanding is that um, uh, folks are opening. It's, you know, people are coming. Um, I think that the patrons are abiding by sort of the COVID requirements. And so I think it is uh, working well so far. Yeah, I, I would say we've been to a few. We've been to TJ's twice now. We've been to Tomorrow's for breakfast. We've been to Oregon Club. We've been to Los Cabos. We were at uh, Maisie on Friday. I think everyone who is doing it is doing a great job. They're following the rules from what we can see. Uh, and I think people are just excited and glad to be out and supporting our restaurants. So any other input or thoughts? Just sure. a, so Yolanda, this this is all outdoor work. Yes, these were all outdoors. Right. Um, you know, we we weren't sure about tomorrow's, but they had some tables right on the sidewalk. We were in the shade. It was lovely for breakfast. Uh, Los Cabos, they they've moved into their parking lot, and again, really nicely done. Mm -hmm. Oregon Club, they had outdoor seating, so they've expanded it and put out tents, and. Uh, TJ's we've done lunch and we've had the perfect spot in the corner in the tree in the shade and it was wonderful so so it sounds like you'd rather make reservations than dinner Yolanda <laughs> I you know I enjoy going out to eat I'm I cook when I have to but certainly if I can make a reservation I will do that <laughs> well, only teasing but you know Bonnie and I have been out a number of times as well and the one observation I will make is is from the the owners themselves is that the indoor dining, since the governor opened up yes. indoor dining, isn't as uh, popular as they thought it would be. And no. so people are very cautious about going indoors to eat. I think it depends on the environment, depends on, you know, how big the space is, you know, how comfortable they are with people moving around uh, in that space. 
So uh, I think outdoor dining, uh, I think is, is gonna be the wave of the future. I think we've got another discussion I think we should anticipate as well. Yeah, I was How can we ask, expand it for next year? Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what I was gonna ask as part, you know, what has our indoor dining experience been like thus far um, since yeah. the governor opened? It's been like, what, has it been two weeks? Uh, I can't remember. A uh, week and a half, a week, 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 week ago, Monday, I think. Yeah. I, oh, I yeah. can tell you that uh, Don and I went to uh, Erica's, uh, on last Friday and Sam wanted to know we wanted to sit outside or inside and of course we, we sat inside and it's just starting to sprinkle a little bit but it held off but um, the people that were inside were very grateful that you know they, they had that they couldn't have been any nicer they couldn't accommodate the numbers that they would have liked to have but uh, I would say that Sam and Erica were very very grateful and very uh, appreciative that the town was willing to work with them yeah. Uh, and gave them the opportunity to use that that land next to them, yeah. and um, I, and I think that the people that were out there were enjoying it. I know there's a specific table that's out there that has somebody's name on it, and uh, I, I, don't look at me like that, Stephen. I uh, <laughs> <laughs> confess. I confess. <laughs> well, I was told that was a specific table specifically for you and Bonnie. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> But um, all in all, it was a, it was a great experience, and um, yeah. I'm looking forward to go out. Are you were you inside, Joe? That's what I'm. You no, know, we we did go inside. Uh, the music was wonderful. They had some great background music, and yeah, the whole back area was open. There was only there was only two of us, two couples in that hot and tired back area. Oh, okay. And then the seating up front, uh, there was like maybe uh, three other couples, and all the tables were pushed off to the side. There was ample room. I wanted to get up and dance because the music was so nice, but uh, that, you know, <laughs> my wife said, "Don't do that." But it was, uh, but the mill was uh, the mill was always like, wonderful. You know, I think the problem is that the South and the West are having a major resurgence, and part of it is they've gone back too fast. And yeah. <laughs> hopefully, it's they were, you know, the fact that they weren't wearing masks, uh, right. uh, and they had the bars open up too, dining and, and safely. I don't know, right. And the bars were open up down there, so that was that was that was a big key factor for sure. So I'm not surprised that people are preferring outdoor dining to indoor. I haven't done indoor dining since it opened. I I'm I'm you know I prefer the outdoor too. I wonder how um, the restaurants are doing with all the rain that we've had. I know that there was there was um, like TJ's. Their space is great. The additional space is great, but it's uncovered really. And, mm. you know, it's, yeah. so I was curious if, if there's been more people requesting tents and if there, if there's plans to put those up just because the last, it's just been a rough, I'm sure a rough week for outdoor dining. Yeah. Well, I know they do, if they want to do a tent, they do have to request a tent permit. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Moving on, discuss potential dates for our select board workshop. So typically after an election, we do a, a, a workshop slash retreat. Um, I guess I'd like to have input. Would people feel comfortable if we had a big enough space to do it inside or, or remotely? I think remotely it's a little hard. Um, or outside, if someone has a big enough yard, and I'd be willing if we wanted to do um, do it outside on someone's deck. I'm not sure if we can do that, or if there's an area at the town that we could do it outside. So I guess first think about dates. Are we looking for an evening or a Saturday morning? Um, any thought on any of that? Michael, go ahead. Yeah, I, um, I just... I, I had a thought, but I think it, it's really depending on what you want to cover as part of the agenda. So I know we have the policies and procedures, um, and I think the mission statement is on tap to, to be adjusted. And I think we want to talk about where we are in terms with our goals and objectives. And yes. kind of see where things are. Um, I do, I, I would, if, if, if that is basically the gist of it, um, it, it encompasses probably, you know, 80% of what the agenda would entail, I would actually make a suggestion to kind of expand the July 15th meeting to, in, 
to include the a workshop at the beginning mm -hmm. that segues into your regular meeting. And the reason why is I think it's important to have attorney need there for part of the workshop slash meeting, because I, I think I think an executive session is going to be necessary to talk about some of the things that are related to the goals that we're going to be talking about in the workshop, if that makes sense. Um, and then there might be some subsequent action at, at the regular meeting later that night. I'm making it sound a lot more complicated than what is actually in my head. Um, <laughs> But, you know, if we held some, like if you have a regular meeting at six, you know, if you wanted to start at like 2.30 or two even, um, you know, that would be a long night, but. Uh, and, and starting at two or 2.30 or two could be difficult for some of us. Some could be difficult for people or three, you know, I think um, it's just, Anyway, that was just my idea. Again, it's coming out a lot more complicated than I'm yeah. envisioning okay. it. Uh, Joe and then Steve. Uh, would any of you entertain doing it on a Saturday? Uh, so that gives us enough time so we don't have to rush our efforts because we know we have a meeting coming up at, at, at six o'clock. Um, and then we have the ability to, you know, be diligent and do the work that we need to do on those specific items that Michael was referring to. And uh, because I don't think those are going to be quick fixes. And I think it's going to take a lot of uh, deliberation, a lot of discussion. And to put a time frame between 2 and two and 4.30 or 5 o'clock, I, I don't know if that's going to be enough time to do the things we need to do and do it and do it accurately and precisely and, and make sure that everybody feels comfortable with what we want to do. Yep. Before so, I go to you, Steve, Michael, you mentioned some of it we, we may want attorney need for. Is that for some of our vision changes, mission changes, or something else? Some of the things related to the goals that we have, the priority projects. Okay. Um, specifically, okay. specifically UGC and also specifically uh, the public okay. safety building. Okay. Okay. Steve? So I was, as far as when uh, we do it and how we do it, I, you know, I'm, I'm okay either way. I would just suggest based on our pre previous conversation that, you know, for us to do this live in person on a deck at a restaurant somewhere, I, I'd be concerned about that. I think we're at this okay. point, we should be considering uh, as much as we'd like to be together. Uh, I, I think it'd be more appropriate to do a remote. Okay. I just wanted to put it out there. So, okay. I think, well, Rob? Yeah. I think the interesting thing about these Zoom meetings is, um, you know, they work pretty well in terms of logistics and sharing documents and things like that. So there's a lot to be said. And also you can just disappear and no one knows, but <laughs> <laughs> or put a picture up, but no, there is a, I, I, yeah, I would be more comfortable with continuing the zoom meeting. Okay. That that's why it was part of the discussion. Brandy. Um, I think, oh, uh, sorry, Rob, just, go ahead. Just one last thing. I think if we are going to spend a couple hours doing a, uh, a retreat, um, then probably it should be separate from a regular meeting, whether it's Saturday or totally another agree. evening, I, I think. Um, okay. Unless, Michael, you needed Lisa to be at both and that was somehow more economic, we could just maybe have a special session with Lisa before our meeting. That wouldn't be the whole. Yeah, I was thinking Lisa could be the bridge between, you know, between the workshop and then going into yeah. the meeting again, because I, th I think. But I think, yeah, I think we could also just meet with her first uh, as part of a regular meeting. Um, maybe, you know, so. If we could do the workshop and put things that we know, you know, have our discussion and then things that we need to run by Lisa do as an exec session yeah. before our meeting on the 15th, if, mm -hmm. if between now and then on a Saturday works for people. So rooms B and C wouldn't be available for us at that point because that, that area is quite large. And for five of us to do our retreat there, that you know, that indoors, uh, Joe, space. and, and uh, you know, I don't know that people are ready for that yet, Joe. Okay, all right, yeah, no, I just throw it out there. It's not that I'm ready for it, but just throw no. it out yep. there. Okay, so that means if we were to throw a date out there, is anybody taking vacation? I'm gonna try to, but nothing's scheduled, so it's been okay. What a mess, huh? <laughs> um, so looking to do the workshop in July, we're looking. Yes. Yeah. 
Um, so a potential date is Saturday, July 11th. I'm not going anywhere. So from nine to 11 up. or nine to noon, and I can work with Michael to put up, to put together an agenda. Michael's making a face. No, I'm just looking at my calendar. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I also do a weeknight too. I mean, we've done weeknights that's worked out okay. I mean, mm -hmm. I guess I'm either either way. Um, Saturday morning would work for me. I, that I think that would be be better. Saturday for morning, me. yeah. Mm -hmm. We can even start earlier than nine if people want to start. I mean, I don't know how people. Oh, please no. Please okay. No. <laughs> please no. Jim, can you do that? Okay. Well, that face said it all. So. Yeah. She, does, she can stay muted. Yeah. I, I mean, I can try, but I am not typically around on Saturdays in July. Okay. Um, I think that'd be tough. Yeah, but I can so, figure it out. Well, okay. We understand. You have Wi Fi out on the lake? Yeah, I do. Maybe but we could. I mean, she wants to utilize lake. it for us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm willing to make an exception. I don't know. So, I, if we can, if people are good for July 11th, do 9 to 11 or 9 to noon, and then plan an exec session with Lisa before our meeting on the 15th. Sounds good. Okay. Yep. Good with me. July 11th it is, 9 to noon, and Michael and I will put together an agenda and get it out to everybody. Thank you. Do you need me there? Uh, For an agenda? If you want. Yeah. Be happy, be happy to throw my two cents worth in. Okay. Okay. I don't know if, if we'll do it in person or remotely. I'll let yep. you know. We'll figure it out and let you know. It will not be between now and next Monday. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Which means we'll have to do it Tuesday or when we'll have to post by Wednesday, Michael, the 8th. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Moving on, our consent agenda. We have two items, our acceptance of minutes for the June 3rd regular session minute, uh, minutes and town manager appointment of Talia Seavey as the D decisions at every turn project coordinator and waiving the 15 day waiting period. If I can get a motion. So moved. In a I, second. I, I, I'll oh. second it, but I do have a, a, a quick question from Michael with respect to uh, Ms. Seavey's appointment. Is her salary coming out of the uh, the grant fund that um, Decisions Every Turn has? Okay, all right, I just wanted to make sure because someone had asked me that and I didn't know the answer. Okay, yeah, Joe, she's replacing Somnia. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay, okay we thank you. We have a motion by Steve and a second by Joe. Uh, if we'll take a roll call, bleh, roll call vote. <laughs> Kinsman? Aye. Mignani? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Shearer? Aye. And Greaves? Aye. Thank you. That passes 5 0. We're now going into our priority project updates, starting with the rail transit district. Michael, do we have anything for that for tonight? No, just wanted to let you know that I did. Um, send a revised development agreement uh, to Mr. Ussolini. I have not heard back from him. Um, I worked on that with, uh, with attorney Mead. So, um, you know, it, it, it is in place and, and I will put it out there uh, right now. You know, I, I probably will ask the board to consider voting on that, even if uh, UGC has not necessarily agreed to everything, just so we have everything on the table because I think we are putting ourselves or we have potentially can put ourselves in a position where we're negotiating against ourselves. Okay. And um, I just want to be careful about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Downtown project river walk and mill pond. Yep. So downtown, um, you know, I'm still working with the identified winning bidder, um, GOCO and sons um, to kind of, figure out what we can do in terms of the contract. Um, we do need another um, level of interaction with Eversource with regards to the undergrounding um, to get a couple more things straightened out. Um, as you can imagine, that is frustrating even when their crews are all 100%. In the world of COVID, it's, it's even less. So, um, you know, I'll keep everybody in touch. I, I still want to 
to get this started in the summer. And I think getting the undergrounding piece done during the summer and into the fall is really just while the world is on the fritz and, and traffic is, is minimal, just we're trying to turn a, a positive out of the negative, or turn a negative right. into a positive. Um, so that's really, really important. Uh, Mill Pond is, is moving forward. Um, you know, they put the guardrail up. Right now they're just waiting for some materials to finish things off. Okay. Um, Jen's been working hard also on the other side of Mill Pond, that boardwalk area that's next to the historical society and finding a way to getting that replaced. But it has been, I don't know if you've experienced this, but I, you know, I drive by it, walk by it a lot, even though it's gated off, you know, it, people just seem to really enjoy it and really like people, it. People are definitely ready for it to be open and a little more accessible and not feel like they have to secretly get in because of the fencing, so. Yeah, well, they're not hiding themselves, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so. Good. Any yeah. questions on uh, either the rail transit or downtown project? I'm good. Okay. Moving on. Public safety building update. So, so two things. Um, I think, Joe, we need to get together, and Steve, I think we need to talk about uh, putting together a forum. That's yep. really kind of on us, and I know we wanted to wait until after the election and then after town meeting to really start putting that planning in place. Um, we have, um, I will let you know that Joe and I have um, met with the Faffords in terms of finalizing this deed um, that transfers the land over to us and just kind of getting that finalized and squared away. Um, you know, there's, if you remember the letter of intent um, or the MOU that we had with Fafford back in 2018, talked about an easement location. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, we're deciding, does it make sense to go ahead and try to finalize that now, or does it make sense to um, delay that until it's time to pull a building permit? Both options seem to be kind of on the table. We just need to make sure what the best one is. Yep. I would think the voters would feel much more comfortable knowing that we have the land before we start, you know, pulling more, you know, Pulling more permits well, or spending even money, I would think. Well, I think. Um, well, yeah, we couldn't we couldn't build the permit or we couldn't build it until we had the permit and we had the land in right. place. Um, but I do think that this is something that we need to talk about okay. in um, exact session. Okay. Remind me, what's the easement for, Michael? They just wanted an access easement that goes to the back. Now, you know, it turns out that. There's probably what an acre of upland back there, Jen, and it's really tough to do anything just because up on that site, you know, the wetland areas actually act as like a basin to hold a lot of a lot of water from you know, rushing down. So it, it would be really, really difficult to do anything there. Um, that being said, you know, we've agreed to that. That was part of the you know, the letter of intent. So, so this is to help him. He has other, he has other easements and access for the rest of the land as well, right? I mean, this well, is he still owns, you know, to the section um, yeah. to the left or to the west of the public safety building parcel yeah. um, that contains some upland as well. Right. Okay. Well, yeah. So, you know, my thoughts on that to try to get control yeah. of the rest of the land. We do. And, you know, yeah. make sure we can use it properly for the trail. So. Okay, moving on, Warren District Valentine Estate updates. So I know David has been working on putting together a meeting of the Valentine Committee again, you know, kind of okay. in this, um, I don't wanna say post COVID world, but you know, uh, post hectic COVID world, um, putting something together. Um, with the Warren District, um, we're having another meeting with the architect, uh, supposedly next week. And, um, you know, hopefully that will go smoothly. Um, in terms of the Hall House, um, we've, you know, we're still working with the winning bidder on developing an MOU between Framingham State and the bidder and the town in terms of some final things that need to happen there. Um, there has, I think, been some changes in the relationship, I think, between um, the bidder, the bidders, which was a partnership, 
Um, and that's something that I think we want to analyze a little bit more. Actually, I actually met with um, with both of them recently to talk about that uh, okay. and just seeing what kind of change there is. Do you have any questions about that? I know there's been some chatter and everything, so I just didn't know if anybody. Anybody questions? No? Okay. Okay. Okay, moving on, uh, town manager report. Michael? All right. Um, excuse me one second. All right. Um, really not much in terms of COVID. Our, you know, our cases are, are slowing down. We are identifying some clusters um, that are kind of popping up here and there um, that are associated with Ashland. And so we're, we're you know, tracking those. Um, you know, Nancy, the school nurses, Amy Childs, who's also working, um, you know, doing uh, contact tracing for us. They're just doing a phenomenal job. It's really interesting what they're doing and how they're doing it. Um, but, you know, we're continuing to look at opening playgrounds and, you know, moving forward with opening plan. It looks like phase three is gonna be delayed a little bit um, from what they had originally anticipated. Um, but that's about it. Jen, did you have anything else related to that? I had no, I one question. Yeah. Oh, go ahead first. Jen. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. So if playgrounds are opening, are we gonna be, you know, the town forest has been open. So are we gonna be opening the parking lot to Warren Woods? And have we had a discussion with Framingham State about them opening their parking lot for access to the state park from that side? I have not had a conversation with Framingham State myself. Okay. Um, you know, I know the police chief has been having some conversations with David Foster as well as a couple of members of the Conservation Commission about the Warren Woods access and actually access along Chestnut Street or potential parking along Chestnut Street. So I know they're talking about that, but I haven't had any direct discussions yet. So is it conservation that has to make the decision as to whether or not we open up the parking at Warren Woods? They, you know, they do have care, control and custody of it. Okay. Um, so I would say yes. Okay. Say yes. So if we can ask them to discuss it and let us know, because yeah. with, you know, it being nice weather, people want to get out. They, you know, we want them to go into the woods, not only the town forest, but the Warren Woods as well. I think we'd like to see about getting those parking open if possible. Okay. Can I just add, what's, do we know anything about Framingham University's, University's plans for that lot? Or what do they think? For the Warrens? You know, I, and I say this with all due respect, I don't, I'm not even sure Framingham State knows what they're yeah, well, you can understand that. Oh, yeah. Um, they have, um, you know, they had specific plans for that property. And, you know, I don't think things are shaping out exactly the way they thought. You know, it just means they need to adjust course. I do think it's important, though, because of that, that we need to start thinking about ensuring the protection of the district, you know, with some... I mean, we could say, so a lot of people put a lot of emphasis on zoning, thinking that that's the fix to everything. It's really not. Um, you know, we could do some zoning changes there, but the fact is, is Framingham State would be exempt from practically anything. Right. So, you know, we need to look at some, some things. Well, are, are you thinking they actually have um, in rather intensive development plans or consideration? No, 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 I don't want people to get the understanding that they're you know actively marketing that property i think they're far away from that i just i think we want to stay one step ahead sure that is kind of where i'm going my question was more like coordination of <clears throat> of use you know they closed the, the lot by the tennis courts right and I, and I didn't know if they were thinking of reopening or what they're thinking of that whole thing was um caused you know people can't park there anymore so they're looking for other places to park right so yeah i'm really not sure i'm really not sure rob i think uh, what transpired there closing that lot rob was had more to do with dogs than probably anything else at this point and uh, hmm. uh which is unfortunate but that's that's really what trans i think transpired um and to go to michael's point um you know i think they're you know they're they're um, plan is to utilize the Warren Center as part of their hospitality program. Yeah, and right. 
the hospitality industry right now is is very much disrupted. So I would think the their oh, program see. is very much in, in flux at this point yeah. as well. <laughs> could be worse. It could be a musical theater department. <laughs> I could, yeah. And the problem with that is Broadway's <laughs> 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 so, closed for two years or something. January of 2021. Yeah. Oh. I, well, I mean, all local nice. venues as well. I mean, all local, yeah, all I, local production companies are done, are not doing anything and not even in the fall. I keep getting uh, cancellations and uh, pushed out dates for tickets that we have for various local venues at this point. So yep. we're well into 2021. If it oh, happens, yeah. Then, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Okay. It, it's, it's sad, Madam Chair, that uh, the Warren Conference group, uh, that's now owned by Framingham University, Framingham State University. Um, their their events program is just about nil right now. Oh yeah. Um, you know, they can only have fifty people for a wedding, and it's not worth them opening the doors in any way, shape, or form. Um, and they're they're letting a lot of people, you know, go on furlough, which is unfortunate. So a lot of their staff is uh, is not not up and running right now. And even yeah. some of the top executives uh, are looking for looking for work right now. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's COVID's taken a, a lot of things. A lot of industries are taking yeah. a hit from COVID Absolutely. because of how it's transmitted and the fact that you can be sick and not know it. Right. That's the big one. It is. Yeah. It is. Okay. Last item on the town manager report, the housing assistance program. Yes. I, you know, I had mentioned this earlier. I'm actually going to let Jen speak to it because she has been the one working really with Emma Mm -hmm. and the Affordable Housing Trust on that. So, um, Do you want Jen, to, I'll turn it over to you. you. Want to share the screen on this? Um, you oh. can. Yeah, oh. share the flyer. Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Um, so Emma has been working with the Affordable Housing uh, Trust over the last several weeks. Um, she's done a really great job uh, researching similar programs uh, that other towns have. Most, you know, some larger mm -hmm. cities and towns program um, all the time. So, you know, that it's long lasting. This is really uh, explicit to uh, impacts due to COVID-19. And so we're able to utilize the CARE, CARES Act money to help uh, residents that may be struggling either with their rent um, or their mortgage. And so um, if you go to our website, right on the homepage is really the um, eligibility requirements, but you have to um, earn less than 80% of the area mean income. Um, and that sort of varies. It ranges from, um, I believe, 67,000 if you're a person, you know, one person family up through uh, uh, 103,000 if you're a family of five. Um, and then what we decided to do is put a flat rate based on the number of bedrooms rather than the number of people in your family. It just seemed uh, to be a little bit cleaner. And so, as you can see on the screen, for an efficiency or a studio, you would receive uh, your landlord or mortgage company would actually receive $1,200 per month. Um, if you're a one bedroom, it's 14. Um, two bedroom is 16. And anything old, three bedroom or more, um, you receive 2,000. And that can be um, up to three months worth of rent or mortgage. And again, I think I said it, um, but our, our agreement would actually, the payment actually goes directly to the landlord and or the mortgage company. And we have an agreement with them to make sure um, that goes towards that. And then uh, I believe our agreement with the landlords would require them not to file any, make any movement towards eviction uh, during this agreement period. It, it's also worth noting, Jen, that uh, anybody that's under Section 8 housing uh, already is receiving governmental uh, assistance, rental assistance, is not eligible for this program. Yeah, it's a good point. Um, so initially, we're going to um, use CARES Act funding up to uh, $200,000. And again, that would be, we're really gonna break it into segments so that we can, we'll be taking uh, applications starting next week on a rolling basis, but um, with Emma and the Affordable Housing Trust, we will sort of take um, quarterly breaks to make sure if we have to make any tweaks, if we're getting if we're getting more than we're expecting, we'll actually move to a lottery system so that we make sure it's the most fair, fair um, process possible. And then yeah. if we 
need additional funding, the Affordable Housing Trust has also taken a vote to provide an additional, Joe, correct me if I'm wrong, 250,000? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. So we'll use the CARES Act money first and then uh, we have the backup of 250,000. I would, on, on behalf of the Housing Trust, I'd like to thank Emory and yourself for all the work that was done in getting this program up and running. Uh, there, there's a lot of fail safes that we wanted to make sure uh, were, were put into this program. And one of the things was if the money doesn't go directly to those individuals, it goes directly to the, like you said, the, uh, the landowner and um, uh, property owners to make sure that the money goes for rentals and not to something else. Yeah, that's and great. The concern that came up, we will do coordination. Um, one of the benefits of having it, uh, our point person be Emma in within our staff is that we will be doing direct coordination with human services, both Kara right. and Jennifer on, um, you know, families or, or individuals that may be receiving assistance through other means, whether it be the emergency fund or others. Right. Great. Well, thank you for everyone who was participating in that and put that in place. Can I just ask a question? Uh, <clears throat> just so 250 from the Affordable Housing Trust, what's, do you have an amount from the CARES Act? What do you think the total uh, budget is going to end up being? We, well, we set aside 400K for that. And, and that was with the first tranche of funding um, that was coming through. So, and we're, you know, when they initially, distributed that first tranche, they said well, we would get another tranche of 1.5 million later. Wow. Apparently that's up in the air now, who knows. Um, we were thinking about splitting that 400K between business <coughs> assistance and rental slash housing assistance, but we've also applied for that micro enterprise grant and 400,000 associated with that. Still have not heard back whether we have been awarded all some or none of that, but um, that could certainly help us on the business end as well. So you think for this, it's it's 250 plus the 400 or is it? Well, the thought is to use the CARES Act funding first, right? Because, 400, yeah. Yeah, because the, you have, um, you know, the trust has a limited amount of funds, yeah. right? Um, and it's one of those situations where you, you know, it might sound bad. You want to spend other people's money um, sure. first than ours so do you have any idea the total demand is there you know you think we'll go through that or you know we don't know what we're going to be doing? I don't, so, so i think we've got two i think we first set aside like 200k of that 400 to see kind of where things go and then you know if necessary you know tap into the other see what happens yeah. Yeah, so we've we've received some inquiries now that we have um, started to really advertise the program, and so Emma started to really receive um, some questions. Uh, so there's definitely some interest. Um, if we gauge it based on uh, what the emergency fund and or the food pantry, you know, that has been um, it sort of peaked initially. You know, we really spiked up uh, initially right when COVID nineteen hit. It, it's really been kind of steady, but it's not necessarily. We're not seeing. Um, as dramatic of a need as we had initially anticipated, at least yet. And so I do think there's some interest. I, I just don't, we'll have to sort of wait and see. Yeah. 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 So, Great, Steve? Yeah, just a quick question, uh, Jen and Michael. I know, uh, you know, one of the concerns certainly is uh, evictions. And I know that uh, I think the governor's, one of the governor's orders spoke specifically to evictions through a certain date. And I think the legislature as well is looking to put something in place regarding evictions longer term. Uh, so any, any information or knowledge about, about that part of this? You really wanted to fire me up, like right at the end, right? <laughs> so yeah, I mean, basically until they start putting money into this, all they're doing is kicking it down the road and putting it on municipalities, which, mm -hmm. Um, is understandable and also regular. Um, so, you know, I, you know, I've seen, you know, I get emails from Congresswoman Clark's office, you know, talking about the House passed, you know, 100 billion or so for this. But, you know, the bottom line is that really, it's great that it passed the House, but unless it passes the Senate, unless it becomes law and actually it's done, it doesn't mean anything. I'm talking about, by the way, I like to see you fired up, Michael. Um, yeah, it, it's <laughs> not our state house, not not the the other house, not the federal. No, 
No, I have not. I have not seen anything. That does not mean that they are not working on it. I, I, the things that I have seen have just been really more about extending, you know, a moratorium and things of that nature. Again, if you're not going to, um, you know, if 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 you've got six months of back rent that you have to pay, you know, that's that's a hole you can't get out of. Um, right for a lot of these people. And then you've also got to think about the landlords as well. You know, they, they can't necessarily take a six month hit either. I mean, these aren't necessarily multimillionaires slash billionaires who are owning some of these properties you know, it's, and the other thing, just, it's money. Yep. The other thing you have to factor in is that, you know, the unemployment benefits, the enhanced benefits are going to expire at some point soon as well. So that's another driver for, <laughs> Yeah, they're calling it a tsunami, I think is what the, you know, what the term is. I haven't heard some tsunami used as much since we've been, you know, having discussions with Bob Gaynor and talking about the, the, the economic tsunami that hit 2008 and wiped out the JPI plan. But, yeah. Good. I think for all these reasons, this is a really important program, I think, to be able to help our, to be able to help our residents and, and you know, keep them in their houses. And, and I think, and in, and in turn help our landlords who are supporting, who are providing the housing. I mean, it's, it's a double edge that, so yeah. Okay. Well, bef okay. Uh, before I go to board reports, we have a couple of people who have still hung on Deborah G and Philip. I don't know if you had any citizens participation you wanted to put in before we let, before I go to board reports. If you want to raise your hand or. Deborah's on the uh, Affordable Housing Trust. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, hi. Um, I was just wondering, did, I'm, I might have missed some of the meeting. Did you talk about issues with racial justice and any plans that you have moving forward? That has, was not on our agenda tonight. We will be putting it on a future agenda as well as something we talk about at our retreat to then bring forward but it was not on the agenda for tonight, but it will be moving forward. Okay, well, Michael knows that I've offered to help any way I can. Great, we appreciate that. That's been that. great. Deb, Good. And Deb's got a lot of, uh, lot of knowledge in this. So definitely Wonderful. Okay, if I'm not seeing anything else, I will go to board reports. We'll go alphabetical starting at the end. So Rob, you get to go first. Um, thank you. Um, yeah, just, well, a couple quick updates. So the chapter 90 funding, I sent an email to Michael and Steve, I guess, um, last time I looked, it was gonna be about a hundred million less than I guess we were hoping. So it's gonna be 200 instead of 300. So I don't know, uh, you know, I'm not surprised given the state of this, uh, this the state's uh, budget, but uh, I don't know if folks had any other insights or Michael, you had anything else you wanted to say about that, but. Uh, no, just um, just Ashland gets uh, four hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year, roughly, to pave roads. Um, so I'll just leave it there. And that's so that's what we're going to likely to get again. Uh, sounds like, and you know, yeah, I don't know. Is there any hope that that could change, or with support from the federal government, we could do a little better? Or do you think it's a done deal at this point? Or no, I. You know what I was reading, and and you know talking about, you know talking with some people at MAPC in MMA. It sounds like that you know it's pretty much set for this fiscal year. Doesn't mean that you know in the future if some infrastructure funds come through another stimulus package that no, there might be no. you know money earmarked for that. But that would be you know kind of like a one-time infusion. I don't think that would be a regular thing. Well, the, this uh, this atmosphere, if we could get something like that, that would be. Pretty helpful. Well, that would be great. That would be great. Okay, thanks. The other thing I wanted to give a, a shout out. I don't know. If, uh, every now and then I go on the Ashland Mass Bulletin Board or the Happy Board, but I saw this kid had posted something. Toby Fink did a cleanup at this the state park. I had to comment. I couldn't resist. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> but uh, I think that's in your house, Rob. That someone's uh -oh. responding. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> None of us. Yeah, none of us. Okay. Um, and uh, I, I have to admit that I may have gone off that rope swing in that island myself a few years back, but I don't know if anybody's had a chance to go out that little island. It's a great, great spot. So he, yeah, 
So he cleaned it up. And I, um, you know, one thing it did, it did remind me, he had asked who's in charge and people, you know, answered it was uh, DCR. And, you know, it did remind me that we should, you know, kind of a recurring issue with us is the management of that whole area. And Michael was talking earlier about, you know, whether we're going to open up uh, Warren Woods and things like that. So, and of course, we always have parking issues and things like that. So, I don't know. I was just thinking that, you know, maybe we, we ought to have a Friends of Ashland State Park group or some way of coordinating that whole area together in terms of all the uses and and pushing for better maintenance of the state park trails. Frankly, and how do you how do you do that? Um, how do you get the state to do a better job there? And how do you help them do it or, or identify resources? Um, so. You know, I just wanted to did uh, thank that young man, Toby Fink, um, for cleaning up. And, um, you know, he's on to something there in terms of trying to better conditions there. So I wanted yeah. to say that. Could, um, could I just add something to that, Rob, uh, just sure. regarding the beach um, in, in DCR? So it's they're actually closed right now for swimming just due to high some high bacterial counts. So just as an announcement, mm -hmm. let everybody know that. And uh, yeah, Toby, Toby's a good kid. He showed up at, uh, he was at town meeting last night and um, you know, he's, he's a community minded guy. Great. So. Is he, a, is he, uh, uh, is he a student and, and uh, how, I haven't met him, so. You know, he recently graduated. Okay, great. Um, the other thing I want, oh, so, um, and um, the, uh, the other thing that I just, I realized, um, you know, as, as, as I think we all know, we're members of the, the Middlesex County Retirement Board, Ashland is, and um, actually, of course, the, we don't manage our own pension fund that's managed by the state. The Middlesex County Board just contributes, as I understand it, funds to the, um, uh, the Pensions Reserve Investment Trust, which is comes under the state treasurer, basically, uh, but it's its own advisory board. And, um, you know, I was thinking, we're, we talked about fossil fuels earlier. And I just kind of realized I was listening to um, this whole controversy about various corporations and universities doing divestment of fossil fuels because um, the fossil fuel companies, of course, um, covered up climate change for 20 or 30 years, even though they knew about it. And um, um, the whole idea is now is to not support them and to help power the transition to renewable energy by not supporting fossil fuels. Anyway, the uh, I was really surprised to learn, and Harvard University, for example, has agreed to divest over something like three, three or four years, their huge endowment, and they've actually been heavily criticized for taking so long to do it. And, the, and Oxford University is um, committed to doing it immediately. For, this is just an example of various people divesting in fossil fuels. So I was really kind of surprised to understand that the Massachusetts State Pension Fund has really no policy on divestment in fossil fuels. There's um, uh, one legislation, I guess, which is kind of alive, which would give um, independent pension funds the authority to divest or something. But there's no, um, there's no current either. If you review their operational procedures, they go into much detail about how prudent they are and how they will do this and that, but there's no divestment. And so I kind of just wanted to, um, you know, ask the board to think about that a little bit. And, you know, I could prepare kind of a position statement. Um, I think, you know, I'm personally interested in pressuring the Massachusetts uh, pension fund to divest from fossil fuels. Uh, but I think also we should consider taking an official position as a member of the Middlesex County Board. I don't know what they've done or not done. I, I didn't see any mention on their website that they've asked uh, for divestment. But uh, so I just wanted to get a feeling from the board if I prepared some sort of material for review, would, would you be interested in uh, considering taking a stance, making a formal communication to our own retirement board and our the the uh, pension reserve investment trust to uh, divest from fossil fuels. So I just kind of wanted to get a feeling from folks on that. Um, Any thoughts? I'd be supportive, Rob. At least the, you know reviewing a draft. Yeah, yeah. I would too. Joe. 
Any thoughts? On yeah, no, I, I, I think that's a good idea. They do have a uh, quarterly uh, bulletin that goes out and they talk about some of their uh, investments and where their monies go to. Um, and I filed that one away, so I'd have to take a look at it and see exactly what. Um, That's right. Yeah. I forgot you were actually one of the um, the members, a direct member. Yes, I'm. In, I'm enjoying my money. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm actually a member of the state, um, uh, although I'm not retired. I'm still in some sort of standing with them, I guess. But, but they do have multiple uh, venues that they uh, yeah put their uh, funding. Well, I, I would say, Rob, if you want to put something together, I don't. You know, if if the majority sure. of the board would like to support that, we can discuss it and right. decide how we move forward with it. All right, thanks, okay. Michael. I don't know if you, did you have any thoughts on this whole issue? I know you're. Very Let, yeah, Rob. Just so that, um, because it has just come up, rather than go into big discussion. Yeah. Let's, if we want, we can look at putting it on a on a an, an agenda. Sure. Moving forward. Okay. All right. I just kind of wanted to. All right. I could. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. Uh, not much uh, tonight. Uh, I do want to acknowledge certainly uh, Jen and Emma and, and the Housing Trust for, for this program, uh, for the, the Housing Assistance Program. I think it's, uh, uh, you know, obviously we've, the town, I think, has done uh, a pretty good job of managing COVID-19 in all of its complexities here, and it continues to do so. So thank you to everybody that was involved with putting the program together. Um, only other thing is, you know, the, the Metro West famous Ashland Farmers Market is, is, is going on. I think we're going into our fourth week, and uh, it's not the same market that we have gotten to know and love over the years, but it is uh, providing local sustainable agriculture to, to uh, uh, the Ashland uh, community and uh, hopefully at some point and maybe even this year we'll be able to expand it somewhat as things become a little bit more relaxed so uh, so that's really it great thank, thank you. you Steve Joe any report thank you madam chair uh, just uh, one announcement uh, that the Ashland Day committee uh, begrudgingly and with heavy heart decided to cancel this year's uh, event um, oh, yeah. We all we all uh, realized that we would be putting people in arms way if there was an event. Uh, we're not sure how many people would actually come to the event uh, with the fear of possibly uh, coming uh, in contact with someone that may have the uh, the, the virus or not. So, uh, and and looking for the future and looking to uh, postpone it. It's not a hurricane, but it's it's just about it's almost as bad as a hurricane. Matter of fact, it's probably worse than a hurricane. And uh, so we're canceling it. I cannot even fathom the idea of sanitizing every ride after every kid goes down one of those slides or whatever. Oh my gosh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, so no, <laughs> no, we don't, have, there's not, I don't think there's enough sanitizer in the world to take care of all those rides. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we canceled that. And we also, you know, begrudgingly canceled the summer concert program because again, the, the, the same rationale, how many people will actually come and, and, and listen and enjoy. Uh, and then there's also, uh, talking with the folks from the Mass uh, State uh, Environmental uh, Program uh, that do the mosquito control. They're, they're very worried this year about the uh, E effect and the number of mosquitoes that are that are uh, out there hatching. And uh, they, they come around that cul-de-sac and they, they do their tests. That's where, the, that's where they're getting all their test results from. And uh, they're very worried. So yeah. um, hearing that, we said that, you know what, again, public health and public safety is far more important uh, for everybody right now and give everybody a rest uh, and we'll see everybody next year. There we go. With respect to that. So that's yeah. it, Madam Chair. Thank you, Joe. Brandy? Um, so I, I, the only thing I have for tonight is um, I'm continuing to work with the um, Ashland Public Schools Reopening Task Force. We uh, received some guidance from the state last week and uh, we meet tomorrow to start um, putting together a plan to, to reopen the, the schools. And um, also uh, we've broken out into individual building task forces as well. So we can start talking about how we're gonna implement specific things at the building level. So, um, so that'll be, it'll be busy for the next month or so as we try to, to get all that in place. Um, and the only other thing I wanted to ask, I missed 
the um, the webinar that uh, Frank Nakashian had hosted a couple weeks ago on the home energy assessment. I was curious if you if anyone had either attended or if that was available for um, like if it was recorded for for people that missed that. I don't. I didn't know if anyone did. I did not get into it. Okay. Right. I would say reach out to him and ask. Okay. Right. He might know. I, I I do have a question for Brandy though, if yeah. you don't mind, Madam Chair. Um, Last night there there was a uh, a line item for four for four um, sure um, pods for the for the school are those the same pods or are those four additional pods for the for the for the school for Warren School for Warren School I think that was probably what they had planned for for the year I don't think we've we haven't assessed any any specific. Um, needs for, as far as I'm aware I, I don't know isn't that just the payment for the pods that they have in place it, I wasn't sure if that's what it was Yolanda or they were look, looking for four additional that, that's that's only reason that's why I asked okay we haven't looked at space requirements for for the you know as far as the requirements coming from the state so we haven't we haven't looked at any of that yet they gave you some great guidelines though yeah it's a lot yeah a lot to, a lot to take in for them Absolutely. I wish them okay. the best of luck. Okay. I have a, a few things. The Mendez School Building Project, the feasibility study, has been accepted to move to the next step in the process with the School Building Association. Uh, so we have, we have been approved to move forward with our schematic design, and we then have to give them our schedule for town votes and schedule for construction. So that just was approved. They're looking for the feedback there. I want to thank Natick. They just had their election and they are now a select board, as are we. And we got a notification that Phil Williams has stepped down from the planning board. So I wanted to thank him for his service there. And I believe that means then that we're going to have to appoint somebody for the planning board moving forward, Michael. Is that correct? Yeah, I believe it's a joint appointment. Okay. Okay. And I also wanted to thank Preston Crow for his 15 years on the planning board. Uh, thank you for running. And I know he will still be involved. I had the opportunity to chat with him today. And I think he will find ways to stay involved in our community. And that's a positive thing. Mm -hmm. Very good. And yeah, thanks, Preston. That's great. You think yeah. he'd be interested in uh, filling in the position on the planning board now that there's an open vacancy? There's something unfair about that. I don't. No, I, no. I'm just somehow. I'm just, I, I. Well, I don't I, know. I, we could certainly ask him. I. I don't know if he would be, but. I mean, with with his background and knowledge, I mean that you know he would be an ideal choice. What did Steve just say about that? And, Steve had a phrase. You know, it just seems to me the last thing in the world I would want to do would go back on a board I was trying to get off of. <laughs> well, you seem to get along with everybody. I just bring it out there. That's no, all. No, I wasn't no, trying no, to make it. No. You know. Make it difficult, but anyway. Okay, <laughs> that is all I have for us tonight. Uh, so we will be getting an agenda out for our July 11th and our next evening meeting will be July 15th. Uh, I'd like to wish everybody a very happy 4th of July. Get time out with your family and friends. Keep going out to our restaurants in town and supporting our businesses in whatever way you feel comfortable. Uh, because we need to keep supporting them as best as we can. Don't and Don't with that, if, what was that? If I could have a motion to adjourn. Don't forget to wear your masks, everyone. That's right. Wear your masks. Motion to adjourn. Thank Second. You. Second. Kinsman. Aye. Mignani. Aye. Mitchell. Aye. Shearer. Aye. And Greaves. Aye. Thank you, everyone, for uh, those who joined us tonight. And that's a wrap on this evening's meeting. Great. Thank you. All. Nice to see Thank everybody. You. Steve, Thank if you. you